John chapter 1. Lord God the Father, I just ask you to bless this time, Lord God, of your word and only about your word. May I speak only the truth, Lord, and put bars and gates on my mouth of worldliness and lies and the flesh, Lord God, that may exalt the word of God above your name, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, John chapter 1. We talked about Andrew last week. And I found out something else information. I talked about the St. Andrew's cross. Now, Peter was said to be crucified upside down because he did not want to be crucified like Jesus. Well, tradition says that Andrew was crucified, and he was crucified in the shape of an X. So they laid the cross down, so they say. And they got a St. Luther, St. Luther, St. Andrew's cross. Don't mind it, that other stuff, but he was crucified. All right. First, I'm first. John 1, 41. I'm going to start in verse 42. Uh, verse 40. John 1, 41. I'm going to start in 42. Yep. I learned. <laughs> One of the two which heard John speak and followed him, so John's disciples. And John will maintain disciples, even after Jesus. When John is in prison, he sends some of his disciples. Jesus, are you the one who... So there were other disciples besides the disciples of Jesus. Followed him with Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first finds his own brother Simon, which is Peter, and says unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted to Christ. All right, that's what we're going to get today. The Messiah. That's Greek. M-E-S-S-I-A-S -S is Greek for Messiah. Boom! Oh, you learned Greek today. You see, there you go. <laughs> if God wanted you to know Greek, He put it in the Bible as Greek. If He wanted you to know Hebrew, He put it in the Bible Hebrew. And everything else, if you want... The best thing to do for words uh, online and all that would be Webster's 1828 Dictionary, not the Bible itself. Now there's a Greek word, Messiah, which means Messiah, plain and simple. So as we spoke about Andrew, he, every time we see Andrew, he's bringing somebody for Jesus. Here is the Messiah. Now we're going to look at what the Messiah is. Chapter 4, John chapter 4, 25. You hear the Messiah. We're going to look at the Messiah. John 4 25. Now, John 4 25 is a woman. She's a, she's a half breed. She's half Jewish, half Gentile. This is the woman at the well. Jesus proclaims her, he's the water, he's the living water. In verse 25, at their conversation, the woman says unto him, I know that Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. So the, the woman says, you know what? He, she's talking to Jesus Christ. And she's, we're waiting for the Messiah. So, look at verse 26. Jesus said, Jesus said, Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Go tell the Jehovah Witnesses, go take a flying leap in the lake of fire. Jesus never proclaimed he was God. The woman says, well, we're looking for Messiah. We're going to look at who the Messiah is. And Jesus says, I'm the one. I am the Messiah. Uh, we're looking for the Messiah. 
And Jesus, you, you, you're repeating yourself. Because I want to get across. I'm the Messiah. Here, I, it's me. Hi. I'm the one. Andrew said to Peter, we found the Messiah. The woman says, we're looking for the Messiah. And Jesus said, I am him. I am he. Whichever English you want to use. That's very interesting. All right, now. Jesus means Jehovah saves. God saves. Christ. Jesus Christ. Christ is not Jesus' last name. Christ means anointed. Messiah means anointed. It means this is the one. Now God's high priests and the priests of Levites and the sons of Aaron were anointed. And would be, you got to say it right, I want to say it the worldly way. It's hard to say it the, the Bible. Olive, oil, olive. The Bible says oil, olive, not olive oil. I have a hard time. I want to do what the Bible says. Oil, olive. And the kings were anointed with the oil, olive oil. Oil, olive. It's hard to say that. I'm trying to get my expression to what the Bible says and what not what the world says. That's what I'm trying to do. And to put that that oil upon them to say, hey, you're the priest, you're the king, you're the one that's God approved. And we do this today in the church ministry by ordain, ordaining. We lay hands on a particular person and say, hey, God is approved of you. God was approved of Aaron and his sons to be the priest. No one else. God approved of King Saul to he fell. God approved of King David, King Solomon, and then it would be their, their children. God approved of King Jeroboam, who would go north. It's saying, God I, God, I approve of that man, and the Christ of God, Jesus Christ, that, that this is my well-beloved son, who I am well pleased. There is no one that cannot bear the title rightfully, and we'll look at it in a moment, of the Christ. Now we'll get into the, the Antichrist. But there is only the Christ. I am not looking for a Messiah. I'm not looking for a Christ. So when you got the Messiah churches today, you got the Messianics and all whatever kind of churches out there involved, in, that's Jewish. That ain't Gentile. I am looking for Jesus Christ, my blessed Savior. I'm looking for Jesus Christ, my blessed hope. I'm waiting for Jesus Christ, my groom. I am not looking for Jesus Christ, the Messiah, though He is the anointed one of God. So again, Messiah is Greek. Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18. Again, terrible writing. Deuteronomy 18. I think it's 15. I just wrote. Deuteronomy 18, 15. Moses speaking to the people. The Lord thy God will raise up thee a prophet, capital P. God raises many prophets. But there is one prophet. From midst of thee, has to be Jewish, and we already read in John chapter 1, he came unto his own, his own received them. When a Gentile comes up and says, I am Jesus Christ, I am the Messiah. You know the misqualifications of the Catholic Church? You're Gentile. That don't fit. You know the misqualification for the Jehovah Witness? You're a Gentile. That, I mean, the 144,000 Jewish virgins 
males. So when you get a female Jehovah Witness with her child, <laughs> but okay, let's get off to Jehovah Witness. We are looking, Moses was Jewish. Because he says, a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, Jewish, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. So everything that Moses was, so is the Messiah, so is Jesus Christ. So number one, when it comes to Messiah, if he's not Jewish, he's not the one. We're not looking for a Messiah like Moses. We're looking for God's Son, our Savior, who suffered and died and arose again off that cross, out of that empty tomb. Daniel, chapter 9. I'll tell you another thing, too. I've I seen them on the way here in Daytona Beach. I've seen them. If a church, one of the things to know if a church is wrong, if it has anything of kingdom in their name, we're a kingdom or this is a kingdom, we're not after a kingdom today. The Jews are for a kingdom, not the church. The Roman Catholic Church wants a kingdom. Our kingdom is New Jerusalem. Daniel chapter 9, 25. I would not go into any church that has anything to do with a kingdom. That's not New Testament. You're stealing from the Jews. That's called replacement theology. In other words, God's all finished with the Jews, so we'll take his promises. That's the whole faith of the Catholic Church. That's the whole faith of the Jehovah Witness movement. And we'll go so far to lie about the replacement theology, we're the 144,000, though we're not Jews. There's a thing with uh, we're the black people, oh, we're Jews. No, you're not. Uh -uh. No it's a lie. Sammy Day, oh, any of those other people were, you know. You're not. You know, you are, you are acknowledging that the Jew is God's person. So if I say I'm a Jew, if I live after a Jew, then God's going to love me. That's not the salvation today. It's not be a Jew and thou shalt be saved. It's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And if you notice, it, sometimes you'll see the Pope. And he's got that little beanie he wears. The same thing that you will see on the rabbis and the Jewish people. It just has another name. You can dress and look like a Jew and still go to hell. Because there are Jews who are going to go to hell if they don't believe on Jesus Christ. So verse 25, Daniel writes about the future. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem, Nehemiah and Ezra, unto the Messiah, the Prince, capital M, capital P, shall be seven weeks. Three score two weeks and the street shall be built again, Nehemiah, and the wall even the troublous times, Nehemiah. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. And that, this is the exact date, and we can't go into it right now. But this cutting off is the exact time that Jesus Christ dies on that cross. Now he told the woman, I am the Messiah. With the prophecy of Daniel and the time of Daniel's writing right now, the Messiah cut off. He dies on the cross. That Messiah is Jesus Christ. And notice it's H, not S, because we're not in the Greek. We're in the Hebrew. Well, Aramaic, actually, I believe this is the Aramaic of Daniel. Shall be cut off, and the people of the prince shall come 
shall come and shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and the end of war desolation be turned. There is the Messiah. There is the testimony. There is the work of the Messiah. There is only one person that died. According to, you know, the Gospel of Paul says, Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the Scripture. There is one of the Scriptures. And one of the scriptures that Daniel tells us that that man, that one person that will die, because there will be many that will die. There is one that's given the title, Messiah, the anointed one, the exact one. And the dating, and we, we can get into it. I've been trying, there's a book by Sir Arthur Anderson. Sir Arthur Anderson will take this passage here in Nehemiah. And he will bring it to the date of the death of Jesus to the minute. I just can't finish that book. I started the book. I can't finish. It is so detailed. But in the short form, what is truly acknowledged, it says the two weeks that Messiah shall be cut off, from the time that Jerusalem was rebuilt by Nehemiah, from the, from, from the decree of build that city, not the temple, build that city, the date is the date that Jesus Christ dies on that cross. Where David purchased, the title deed is recorded in the Bible, where Abraham took Isaac, not Ishmael, in the very spot that he lays Isaac down to offer him before God is the place where the temple would be. Now, Hebrews says Jesus died outside the gate. He didn't die in Jerusalem. He died outside. He died the same spot where Isaac was lying, where the ram was caught in the thicket. So there is the Messiah. Um, so Andrew and the woman knew their scripture. Andrew and the woman did not have what we have in the scripture. And Andrew and that woman knew more than the Jehovah Witnesses and the Catholics and the morons and even the Jewish people themselves. The fact is that I'm going to say 90% of the Jews from the time of Jesus to today has rejected the very fact that their Messiah is and has come. And I said, like I said the other day, I was watching this video, and they totally and absolutely reject Jesus Christ completely. That they say we are worshiping a false god who proclaims, and that's what the Jewish people is. They are so ignorant to realize that that was their Messiah. And now you got Gentiles that come in, oh, we're looking for the Messiah, we got the Messianic church and all that. You're just as deceived as the Jewish people are. Now, Matthew 16. Matthew 16. I'm not looking for a Messiah. Never was. The Jewish people are. Yep. When the Jewish people heard at John baptism, this is my beloved son, who I'm, that, that's the Messiah, that's the one, that's the anointed one. That's the Christ. When Peter, James, and John were in the mountain transfiguration, this is my beloved son, that's the Christ, that's the Messiah. Why was it revealed only to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Because the entire nation had already rejected Jesus. You're not going to get any more revelation from God by rejecting the revelation already given. There are people who tell me, well, show me God. I am showing you God. And God's not going to show you so if you won't believe I'm bringing you God, Jesus Christ. 
So Matthew 16, 16. Now we're going to look at Christ. Christ and Messiah go hand in hand. Now, I, now listen, when I tell you we're not looking for the Messiah, don't get me wrong, Christ is our Savior. And he says, Simon Peter, Andrew's brother, answered and said, Thou art the Christ. The Christ. The Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter saying, You're the one. You know, there's another Jesus in the, in the, in the book of Acts. There's another man named Jesus, and he changes his name. <laughs> I don't want to be associated with that holy and righteous name. And he changes his name. And there's a whole bunch of Jesuses in Mexico right now called Jesus. They named their children Jesus. Jesus is the Spanish name for Jesus. That don't make them the son of God. Peter said, you're pointing to God. You're the one. You're the Christ. Christ means anointed. God anointed his son to be the one, the only one. Uh, Acts 16.20. I'm not, Matthew 16.20. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus, the Christ. Why? They're not going to believe. They're going to reject them. Peter says, Thou art the Christ. Jesus responds. Don't tell anybody that he was Jesus, me, Jesus speaking, the Christ. The woman said, Sir, we're looking for Messiah. Woman, yes, I am the Messiah. So I had Jehovah Witnesses tell me, Jesus never proclaimed he was God. <laughs> I just told you, he right. is the one. Well, he's the son of God. You cannot be the son of God. You cannot be the, the Christ if you're not God. Anointed of God. 23, 10. Matthew 23, 10. So Peter, the first pope, said he's the Christ. Jesus said he's the Christ. Jesus said he's the Messiah. Matthew 23.10. What else? Now, I am always speaking when I teach the Bible. I'm always speaking as Jesus is God and God is Jesus, okay? Now, there's God the Father, there's God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. There are three, and the three are in one, and yet one is three. Can't explain that, but it's true. But I speak as Jesus is God. It's 23.10. Neither be ye called masters, For one is your master, capital M. Now look at verse 9 real quick. And call no man your father upon the earth. Leave the Catholics alone for a moment. Call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your, see the capital F, Father, which is in heaven. Who's that? That's God, right? Amen. Neither be called masters, for one is your master, capital M. When you got a word in a in the Bible like that and it's capitalized, remember that prophet we saw capitalized? Moses said, and I forget how he said it, but that, that prophet capital P. That's God. That God is Jesus, the prophet. That capital M is God, even Christ. Didn't Peter just say, You're the Christ? Didn't Jesus just say, I'm the Christ? Did not he just yeah. saying, talking to the people, saying, call no man your master. One is your capital M in master, Christ, 
And we already know that Jesus said he is the Christ. We just read that. So you know what Christ means too? It means not only means anointed. It means master. Now we see father in verse 9. That's a Catholic church. They call him father. Verse 8, rabbi. They call him rabbi in the Jewish church. You know what the master is? That's your secret organization. You're a mason. You're Freemasonry. And Jesus says, Rabbi, Jewish, Father, Catholic, secret society, don't you call them any titles. One is your title. And when we look at Christ, we also see Christ means master. Now, if Christ said, if Jesus Christ said, I am Christ, Peter, and he says right here, Master is Christ. Would you think that God will allow his followers to call anybody just a master when he says, don't do it? So when you're saying Jesus Christ, you are saying God saves. Jesus means Jehovah saves. The anointed one, my master. And that's where you can, that's where you can say Lord Jesus, you know what Lord Jesus means? You're my master. I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. There are Christians who call him Lord and that don't do what he don't do what he tells you to do. That's not Lord. Now, I'm sorry, people don't like master slave relationships. I'm to do everything he tells me to do. He's my master. He's my Lord. 27, 22. 27, 22. Matthew. You know, we're getting a realm here that's not talking churches today. But we'll get, go we'll vote. We'll get a salvation message every Sunday morning. Why are we getting this? Matthew 27, 22. Pilate. You know who Pilate was? Pilate was the Roman governor. Pilate was the Roman official. He's the official. Pilate says unto him then, What shall I do then with Jesus? Okay, that's, that's God. Which is called Christ. You know what Pilate said? What do I do with the anointed one who is your master? Talking to the Jewish people. That's a Roman official. Now he's not proclaiming Jesus as the Christ. I heard he's called Christ. It is common knowledge. By the time that Jesus is coming up to his crucifixion. That's the Christ. That's your master. That's your anointed one. Who the Jehovah Witnesses say he never said he was God. A half breed Jew says we're looking for the Messiah. Okay, I'm him. Simon, the chief apostle of Jesus Christ, says you're the Christ. Jesus says I'm the Christ. The Roman governor says. I heard you call Christ. Talking to you know you know what he's doing. He's testifying to the Jewish people. He's your Christ. He's telling, he's that's your Christ. God ordered Pilate to say, "You tell those Jews, those Jewish people that's their Christ." And that's what that's what Pilate did. Uh, Mark eight twenty nine. These are all in order. Mark 8, 29. I only go out of order if we have to go out of order. But if we can go in order, we do order. And we're just looking at what we just saw in Matthew. It's a refresher. It's in the Bible. It's important. It's recorded several times. It's more known than the birth date of Jesus. 
8, 29. And he says unto him, But whom say, but whom say ye that I am? And Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. Pilate will later on say, You're the Messiah. You're the Christ. You're the D of the D of the all the D D to be done. How come Pilate can make a confession and Peter make a confession that Jesus is God, but the Jehovah Witnesses can't? And we're looking at the same Bible they have. Uh, 1235, Matthew, I mean Mark 1235. Mark 12.35 Now we're going to get into what we have of the gospel. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So Jesus answered said unto while he taught in the temple, how say the scripture that Christ is the son of David? So Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one, came from the line of David in Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 3 traces the genealogy all the way back to David. And then all the way back to Adam. So if you're going to have somebody come up and say, I'm the Christ, and there's been many people who say Christ. The Antichrist. You better be able to trace your family back to King David. King David was Jewish. It's remarkable. Chapter 13, verse 6. Mark 13, 6. He's coming back today. I can't turn the page. Now watch this thing. Mark 13, 6. For many, many, you know how many many is? Shall come in my name. I already told you, there's a lot of Jesus in Mexico. That's the name of Jesus. And they named them in the name of Jesus of the Catholic Church. That's not a name just picking out of the blue. It's, I'm going to name him Jesus because of Jesus Christ. Watch. Saying, I am Christ, capital C, and shall deceive many. There are other Christ claiming people, and they're going to deceive, and they're going to be many. And some of them will even come in the name of Jesus and proclaim Jesus Christ. And you can look up online and Google it. You will find, say, people profess to be Jesus Christ, and there's this list and list of people who proclaim to be Jesus Christ. It doesn't say whether it's pork or. But they're not the Christ, they're not the one, they're not anointed. That's the difference. And they're not from David. They're not Jewish. When you see a, a name that lists and he's a Gentile and looks like a Gentile. Uh -uh. So, you can't say Donald Trump is the Antichrist. Though some people say I'm, I say that. He don't fit. Unless he's a half breed. But I keep on going. That was chapter 13. Mark 15, 32. Mark 15, 32. But many are going to come and say they are. And guess what? They are not. Uh, 
There we go. This is someone's new Bible. Mark 15, 32. Mark 15, 32. Uh oh. Here we go. Let Christ, the King of Israel, capital C, capital K, the Christ is a King of Israel. Can you say it, yes, King of Kings. There it is, Christ. Lord of Lords, there's Master. The Christ is anointed, He's Master. He's Jewish, he's of David, and he's king of Israel. I understand more than I speak like that. I speak like, a, a, like one of the kids. The Antichrist. It's going to be a ruler of Israel. He's going to be a king, but he ain't the king. I wonder who will vote for him. Ah, I didn't say that. Luke 2.11. Hey, wouldn't it be remarkable if you voted for the Antichrist? Whoa! What if the Antichrist comes? Hey! The, uh, and as a Christian, before the rapture, you vote for the Antichrist. No, it's a dialect. What if the next president we have, or you vote for, is Jewish, can't, God knows it traces back to David, and, pro, and proclaims to be the one, and you vote for him. I don't want to have that thing. I'm not saying Donald Trump is the answer, I'm saying Luke 2.11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, capital S, which is Christ the Lord. Now remember that Lord goes all the way back to Master. There's David. That's Jesus Christ. In the manger. Born. You know what the Antichrist is going to be? The Antichrist is going to be born one day. If he's going to be a complete carbon copy of Jesus, he has to be born. He has to be of the Jews. He has to be of the line of David. Or the Jews are not going to believe. Oh, that one. And believe me, the next time somebody comes and professes to be the Christ, the Jews are going to check him out. That's what you were supposed to do with the Passover lamb, wasn't it? But we're not done. Uh, chapter, that was chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 26. And it was received, and he was re revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he has seen the Lord's Christ. Maybe once a month. Now that's Simeon. Now who did Simeon just see? He saw the baby Jesus. And the Bible records for us as he is about to anoint, he's about to anoint the 80 year old Jesus. The Holy Spirit said, that baby you're anointing is the Lord's Anointed one. Eight days, year, eight days year old. That's the Christ, and that was Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit says, Simeon, you're not going to die until you see the Lord's Christ, the Lord's Master, the Lord's Anointed One, the Lord's D of D of all these to be D. And there's the eight day year old Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit said, That's him. That's him. Luke chapter 4, 41. Luke 4, 41. There might be some change. Uh oh. Uh oh. To do anything. Another one. Luke 4, 41. The devil, never demons. Please don't say demons. 
They're devils. From a man who studied Greek and, and uh, Roman mythology, which I did, you can have good demons and you can have bad demons. Devils, they're all bad. The devils also came, on, came out of many, crying out, saying, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. When he dispossessed the devils from people, they came out of the people saying, You're the Christ. The Son of God. Well, who's the Son of God? Jesus Christ. Who did, who did the devil say he was? He's the Christ. Who did Peter say he was? The Christ. Who did Pilate say he was? The Christ. Who did Simeon say he was? The Christ. Who did Jesus say he was? The Christ. Who did Jews say he's not? The Christ. And yet the world's coming to one day that Antichrist. When the Bible, we, we're doing right now, you know what the Bible, you know what we're doing right now? We're revealing the Christ. We're not going to fall for the Antichrist. You know 95% of the world will. Listen to me, when the Antichrist comes, he's going to proclaim, we're not going to do that study. Probably end up doing something. In Titus, uh, not in Thessalonians, said he's going to proclaim to be God and do the powers of God, and they're going to go, ooh, ah. He's going to he's going to make an image that's going to come to life more than Mickey Rathbun. More people will take the Antichrist as God than take the Christ that is God. And Jesus said, I come in my own name, but when he comes in his name, him you'll receive. And people are sure receiving the name of Trump. Again, I'm drawing a very fine line. But we're going to move on because people don't like when I speak like that. John, chapter 120. John 1.20. Now this is John the Baptist. We studied this a long time ago. He confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. The Jewish people at the time of Jesus coming to ministry were expecting to see the Messiah. And he came, and they received the not. Uh, that verse is where he came unto verse eleven. He came unto his own, that's the Messiah, and his own received the not. They rejected the Messiah. Chapter four twenty-five. John four twenty-five. Four twenty-five. It's a reduced class because of the situation that we're in. Just again, rehashing. John 4, 25. The woman said to him, I know Messiah is coming. Verse 26. Jesus said, I speak unto thee, and he. So all the Christ we've been looking at, Peter said it, Pilate said, I hear it, Simeon said it, God said it, Jesus said it. It's me. How dare the, the Jehovah would Jesus never proclaim to be God? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Uh, verse 42, same chapter. John 4, 42. Now watch this. This is after people got saved. He said unto the woman, Now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard ourselves and know that this indeed the Christ, ready? The Savior of the world. An entire town says, there's the Christ, and he's the Savior. And the Jehovah Witnesses say, no, nope, that's not the one. The Jews say, no, nope, that's not the one. The Catholic Church says, no, go to Mary. Have we got enough testimony of the Bible itself that we don't have to watch Veggie Tales, but we can see Jesus Christ? And yet churches have veggie tales and hatch the pirate and they don't have the Bible stories. 
And how many Christians are ignorant of what we just... They'll say Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. And they don't even know what the Christ is. That's a shame in the churches today. That's a shame. Chapter 7. When you turn my page. When saying, keep on going. I think it was it was last week. I need a third hand. John 7. But we don't have to pay for it. John 7. 41. John 7 41. Others say, This is the Christ. So there are people who say that that's the Christ. But some say, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? He didn't come out of Galilee. He lived in Galilee. But it's not where he came from. Has not the scripture say, Christ coming from the seed of David? Yes, we already saw that. And out of the town of Bethlehem, where David was, where was Jesus born? Bethlehem. You know what they got mixed up? He came from Galilee, but that's not where he was born. But there, people said, hey, that's the Christ. Hey, that's the, no, that's not him. Same thing today. He's the Savior. No, that's not him. We go preach in the street the gospel. Well, we got something else. We got somebody else. We got, we don't have no one else. Things haven't changed. Um, chapter 20, verse 31. Chapter 20, verse 31, John. I told you we get ahead in John. Wait, the Lord willing. Wait till we get all these chapters, what we're doing. I don't, know, I don't think we're ever going to finish young know, before the Lord comes. Or in chapter 1. But I'm in no hurry. John 20, we've learned a lot, haven't we? Even on the twist and stuff, so I like that better for But these are written that you might believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. You know why the Gospel of John is written? That you might believe that Jesus is Christ. This, one, this is why we're studying the book of John. So John comes at the conclusion of his book, near the conclusion, near the last chapters of John. I want you to believe that Jesus is the Christ. Well, that's what we're saying from chapter 1. So now from the John chapter 1 all to the book of the Gospel of John, let's get the very good one fact is, Jesus is the Christ. He is the anointed one. There is no other. Well, how can Christians put pastors in front of them? How can Christians put churches in front of them? How can Christians have other people besides the one and only Jesus Christ? Why? There's only supposed to be one. We're only supposed to have one master. You want to go to any of the churches around Daytona Beach and you'll find that Jesus Christ is not the master? You want to go to some black churches in, 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 in Daytona Beach and they'll be pointing to you a political candidate rather than Jesus? That on Tuesday their churches will be opened up as polling places? What happened to church and state? How come, it, how come they say, oh, no church and state, no church and state, we're in the... And yet, out of the pulpit, you tell people, go vote. Meanwhile, they will go vote, but they don't, they don't go out and tell people about Jesus. And the Bible commands you, go in all the world and preach the gospel. What's going on here? Tell me. They want me to go vote. I'd rather go preach about the one who's, who's my Savior. I want to preach about the one who's the one. I want to do what he told me to do. And he never told me to go vote. Aren't you glad aren't you glad election is over Tuesday? Uh, Romans chapter one, verse sixteen. Let's go see what Paul has to say. Romans one sixteen. Romans one sixteen. Well, I that's why I have a hard time. Well, I have a hard time opening this Bible and I have a hard time reading my my writing. Romans. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't have to wear it now. Do you like to wear it? I can't take my fingers and turn my pages, but I don't have a mask. Yeah, like All right, Romans 1, 16, I hope. Boy, I write. Oh, boy, look what I just said. Look what verse we're reading now. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What did Jesus say? Go in all the world and preach the gospel. I can't preach. I can't tell people. Then you're ashamed. But you can tell me about your political candidate. You can tell me about your gun. You can tell me about the movies. You can tell me about your sports. Notice Paul says Christ. The same anointed one is preached by the by the man called Paul that we believe. Three twenty four. Three twenty four. Being just justified freely. By His grace, to the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The Christ we have been talking about justifies us freely by His redemption. That's the one. He has a gospel. He is the master. He is anointed one. He's of David. He's Jewish. He is God. He's proclaimed by Peter. He's proclaimed by Simeon. He's proclaimed by Pilate. He's proclaimed by the Holy Spirit. And he is proclaimed by Paul that as a gospel, which we're justified by grace through the redemption, and Christ is put first before Jesus. It's the lesser of two evils. 5-1. Yeah. Romans 5 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord, there's Master, Jesus, Jehovah's Saved, Christ, the Anointed One, the Master, God's only chosen, God's ordained. We are justified, justification again. There he is. By Paul to the churches. Verse 6. Chapter 5, verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. So, when the Jehovah Witnesses say that God, that Jesus never said he was God, Paul says that Christ died for our sins right there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That Christ died for our sins is the same Christ that Christ said, that Jesus said, I am the Messiah. I am the Christ. Don't tell them that Jesus is the Christ. That Peter says Jesus is the Christ. That Pilate said he's the Christ. That the Holy Spirit through Simeon said that's the Christ. That is the same Christ we are justified freely and died for the ungodly. That is the one and only Jesus Christ that the Jehovah Witnesses deny. Chapter 6, verse 9. I know what to do. Can you please help me find more rocks for my rock collection? All right, we've seen the gospel of Christ. Now look at this. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Well, he said over here in chapter 5, verse 6, Christ died for the ungodly. He says over here, Christ being resurrected. We read about Paul telling us the gospel of Christ. So the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures is the gospel of Christ that we're to believe that Jesus himself going all the world and preached the gospel. Okay, let's just put it in here. 
Again, we're getting so close to political time. I don't see anything here about politicians. I see the main event of our whole Bible study, and the main event of the only one true person there is, is God, and that God is Jesus Christ. Not Republican, not Democrat. So we saw in Romans, the, the gospel of Christ, Romans chapter 5, verse 6, we see that this Christ died for the ungodly, and Romans chapter 6, verse 36, 6, 9, we see that Christ died. That's the gospel. And it's done through the Christ. So we can't say, okay, Christ Messiah is that's not the church age. Yes, it is. But no Gentile is looking for the Messiah. But he is our Messiah. He is our Savior. He is God. He is anointed one. He is that the Jehovah Witnesses. Well, Jesus never said he was God. All right. Romans chapter 5, verse 6. Christ died for the ungodly. Romans chapter 6. That Christ being raised from the dead, 6 9. Did we not read in the gospel that Jesus said he was the Christ? Does not say in Acts 20 28 that God's blood was shed. Did it not say that God suffered and died for the, for the sinner? That's Christ. That's why in, in the second epistle of John, he says, do not say good afternoon to heretics like Jehovah Witnesses. You'll even have to lose rewards. If you ask a Jehovah, the very first question, if you don't want to do battle with them, the, all right, just ask a Jehovah Witness one question. Is Jesus God? And they will outright say, no, he's not. He say, get off my doorstep, because we've seen enough he is God. Don't say, you have a good day. Just say, get off my doorstep. And then tell them you're going to call the cops, because they told me they'll call the cops on me when I try to come on their property. I've got the video. It's on my YouTube. Look at Jehovah Witnesses threaten to call the police. Tyler Hayward, and you'll find the video of them saying, we'll call the police. Get the Jehovah Witnesses and announce their heresy, and they'll tell you, no, he's not God, and say, get off my doorstep. I just heard a man preach from the Bible, multiple books. We did Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we're in Romans, that Jesus is the Christ, Jesus is the Christ of the gospel, and the gospel is Jesus Christ, and he suffered and died for man, and that man is me, and the God is God. Plain and simple. Uh, that was Romans 6, 6.23, Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus, all right, let's, let's break it down again. Jehovah saved. Christ, the anointed one. Lord, master, call no man your master only. That Jesus, that anointed one, that master is our eternal life. That is Jesus Christ. That is my God. That is the gift of God. The Messiah is the gift of God. Get into the Jews first, but they reject me. There is much to be said about Jesus Christ. Then giving a witness, a gospel message to a church full of people who are all saved. No. Giving out goat food and not sheep food. This is sheep food. But this is bad in churches. Um, that was six. Eight, nine. Romans eight, nine. Romans eight, nine. 
eight, nine. And notice what we're doing. We're taking the King James Bible and we've been doing all verses. But ye are not in the flesh, but of the Spirit, capital S. And so be that the Spirit of God, capital S, dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, those are the Spirit of God and then the Spirit of Christ. That's the same thing. No, it's not a child. He is none of us. And if Christ be in you, verse 11, the Spirit of Him raised up Jesus Christ. Jesus. That verse, that verse is telling us that God is the Spirit, the Spirit is God, the Christ Jesus is the Spirit, the Christ Jesus is God, God is the Spirit, God is the Christ Jesus. And if you're not saved, you're not of God. If you're born again, you've got the Spirit of God. You've got the Christ of God. You've got God. If you're not saved, you don't have any of it. You're lost. Plain and simple. And there's no mention of Mary. That's eight. Uh, verse 35, 835. 835. Now, 835 to 39 is the surety of our salvation. Ready? Who shall separate from the love of Christ? There's, there's, there's our stuff. Who's going to separate from the love? Shall tribulation? Shall distress? Persecution, famine, nakedness, sorrow, sword. For it's written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors to him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor anything present, nor things to come. Nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. They're one in one, and then nothing's going to separate you from the Christ. Nothing's going to separate you from God. Nothing can ever get you unsaved. Why? Because we have the Christ. And that's a long list of things that Paul just gave. Paul gives us a whole list is nothing. When you're in Christ. Now, warning. 1 John 2.18. Warning. People are afraid of the Antichrist. Christians are afraid of the Antichrist, though they will never see the Antichrist. Don't get the mark. Don't take the mark. Don't take the needle. It's got the mark. When the mark comes along, we're going to be going gone. Why isn't your church teaching that? If I get a needle and it's got something in it, it's only going to disappear when I die or the rapture does happen. Okay? So, 1 John 2, 18. Ready? Little children. It is the last time. Is it not the last day? And ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. There he is, the Antichrist. Who is the Antichrist? Antichrist. He's against the real Christ. But watch this. Even now there are many Antichrists. Plural. Whereby we know that it is the last time. You know the last days are going to point out? John says there's going to be many Antichrists. There are going to be many people. There's not very many people coming out saying I'm Christ. There's going to be many. There's more than just the one Antichrist. Now we're not done. Verse 22. Same chapter. Who is a liar? But he that denies Jesus is the Christ. You know what you have to be to be saved? Jesus is the Christ. 
If he's not the Christ, you're a liar. He is an antichrist. And denieth the Father and the Son. You know what that's saying? If Jesus is not God to you, you're an antichrist. Oh, there are a lot of antichrists. There is. They come knocking on your door. They're called Jehovah Witnesses. Because they're closed up with COVID-19. But there it is. There's a bunch of people who come knocking on your door and telling you that Jesus is not God. The Bible says they're antichrist. I didn't say it. The Bible did. And Christians don't even know it. And Christians don't even know that 2 John says, we're not even the you know, the peaceful, loving Christians that just loves everybody but the street preacher. They'll reject the street preacher and say, I'll give you some water, have a good day, Mr. Jehovah Witness, and then lose any rewards. And they don't even know it because their pastor, preacher, teacher won't preach out of the pulpit. They won't meet in assembly like we meet meeting outside and having a wind blow in our Bible and three people at the table to learn what the Bible says. And then when preachers and teachers and other Christians hear these videos, they don't like what Stiley said. You don't like what the Bible says. Uh, that was what? Chapter 4, verse 3. 1 John 4, 3. All I'm doing is reading the Bible. We'll start in verse 1. 4, 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit. Spirits of Christmas? You know what I did with the spirit of Christmas? I tried that spirit and I found it false. I found it a liar. I don't believe Christmas. You know what churches are all for Christmas? They, the pastor did not try the spirit of Christmas. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. Oh yeah. How be it we know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh is God. That's what salvation. There are people out there running around saying they're saved and they have no idea or anything what Jesus Christ done. They just said a prayer. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. You know what you have to believe? You have to believe that Jesus Christ is come of God and is God to be saved. Or you're not saved. I was never taught that Jesus was God in the Catholic Church. I was taught Mary was God. All right, last place, Second John 7. Second John 7. And this upsets a lot of churches, a lot of because they don't study their Bible, and it kicks them right in the shin. Second John 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world. Many. Who confess not that Jesus Christ has come into the blood. There's many people who say Jesus Christ came. What is the what is the problem? Many don't confess that Jesus Christ is God. We're saying God is come in the flesh. Because anybody can say Jesus came. Is Jesus Christ is of God by God and came. It's come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Remember we read many Christ, antichrists are coming? Hey, there are many people who profess that Jesus Christ is not. The Mormons profess that not to God. The Mormons are so far going to say that Jesus and Lucifer are brothers. So the Christ of Jesus is God. The Christ is to be believed fully as God. And that the Christ has a gospel. That the Christ died and suffered and arose again the third day. He has the been of David. 
He is professed to be by Jesus himself to be Jesus, by Peter, by Simeon, by the Holy Spirit, by Pilate. He is to be Lord and Master of our lives. That's what it means, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Plain and simple. Great when you study the Bible. Now, what if we just took one chapter every Friday? We would not have learned all the information we're learning. I had a person tell me, you're just taking too, I had two people tell me, you're just taking too long. I'm in no rush. We're just taking too long. Hey, look at all we did learn. Yeah. Look what we all could have missed. Lord God the Father, I just thank you for this time. I thank you for your word. Lord God, I thank you for a better understanding of who Jesus is. Understanding what Christ did. But Lord, may we now... When we say Jesus Christ, we understand who Jesus and who the Christ is. And understand that there are others out there running around, professing to be Christ, professing to be Jesus. And there are liars. And there are people running around professing to say who Jesus is not. And our liars and antichrist, Lord. May this message, rather than upset people, may they just bring people to the knowledge and understanding of the Christ, Jesus. Amen.